Okay, so um, when you are shadow boxing, you're practicing everything that you would do to try and hit another person, um, but without the other person. So it's like punching your shadow. So everything you do, you have to start from the ground up. So the very first thing to do is get your feet into position. So feet shoulder width apart, just step back slightly with your right foot, and then you bring your arms forward as if you're a Superman and you're about to take off, and then bring your hands to your face like you're looking through binoculars because you've flown so high. Um, I like this silly when I make puns, but I just can't stop. Not even puns, dad joke, whatever. Okay, so, um, hands are up. First thing is, when you step anywhere, you are pushing off of the back leg and shifting your weight onto the front leg. Um, your weight should always be through your center of mass, center of gravity, so you're always upright. You don't lead with your head, you step. Okay, step. So, if we're gonna go forwards, um, we are lifting up our foot, pushing off our back foot, and catching with the front foot. Same thing if we're going backwards, we're shifting our weight, lifting up, and going back. So when you're stepping forwards or backwards, it's kind of an exercise of just shifting your weight from one foot to the other, to the other. Um, it sounds really obvious, but when you're not thinking about it, a lot of the time, you'll want to step and then drag that other foot through. So you end up pulling yourself forwards and it's not what you should be doing. Um, I was gonna make a zombie reference, but I don't think that's appropriate at the moment. Okay, so um, while you're at home, find a space to yourself. Um, hopefully you've got at least like say three or four square meters of space. Um, bring your hands up and just step, step, step. So one of the things you'll probably notice um, when everyone starts out is they go step and then they bring their right foot up here and then why are my feet so close together? You always want your feet to be shoulder width apart. So step and then bring that back foot up probably about half as much as you think you need to bring it up. Is that right? Good. So forwards, forwards, and now backwards, backwards, backwards. Remember, you're pushing off in the direction that you are trying to move. So if I'm going forwards, I'm pushing off the back leg and catching with the front leg. One, two. Going backwards, I'm pushing off with my front leg and catching with my back leg. One, two. Okay, you can get a little bit of a shoulder movement into it, but you want to stay as upright as possible. Any questions so far? Good. Yes. Yep. Perfect. Perfect. Also, try not to drag your foot. Um, so when you move, just lift your foot slightly and put it down gently. Perfect. Okay. Now, you want to go left, you want to go right. So instead of going forward, if you want to go left, you push off with your right foot and catch with your left foot. Like that, okay? That's a good point, thank you for reminding me. Yeah, hands up, lift, lift. Good, now if we want to go back to the right, the same thing, but the opposite. So you push off with your left foot and catch your weight with your right foot. One, two, okay? Remember, push and catch, not step and drag. Does that make sense? Give us a demonstration. Push and catch, push and catch, and back the other way. Catch, push and catch, good. Now, you can mix these all together, so you go forwards, backwards, left, right, and then you can go diagonal and diagonal. What you don't want to do, is if I'm going that way, you don't want to cross your legs, because then someone can kick you, um, your off balance. If you're going that way, you need to step right first. So if you're going right, you always need to step with your right foot first. If you're going left, you always need to step with your left foot first. Sense? So if you come left, forward, go right, and back. Good. Now diagonally forward, whoop, diagonally right, whoop, backwards, whoop, backwards. Whoop. Good. So we're going back and left, we're stepping with our left and bringing our right foot back. We're going backwards and right, we're stepping with the right and catching with our left. So in your living room at home, you can now just go bop, 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 and just practice throwing your uh, weight from one foot to the other, kind of like you're juggling almost with your feet. So what does that look like when it's flowing? Huh, good question. Why don't we get a professional in here? Forward, 
backwards, left, right, moving around, up, up, get your shoulders into it, up, up, don't even think about punching at this point, you can move your shoulders a little bit, so jab, jab, punch, jab, step, up, 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 up. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to try and mix the, the punches in with it. Um, but we're going to do it in, again, a different kind of fashion. So we're not going to actually punch first, we're just going to punch with our shoulders. Um, the reason for that is anytime you punch, um, you don't want to use the power from your arm, you want to get the power from your core, okay? You've got a lot more muscles in here, in your butt, in your thighs than you do in your arms. So if you can use those to punch someone, it'll be a lot more solid, a lot harder, and you'll be able to do it a lot faster. So to start with, we're just gonna get that core moving, and we're gonna try and get the timing right with our feet. Um, everything always comes back to your feet. If your feet are in the right place, you'll be able to do a punch, a kick, whatever, um, in a much better, easier, stronger way. So to start with, right foot back, left foot forward. Um, every, we're going to start with the jab, so when you step forwards, you push off with your right, catch with your left, and you push your shoulder forward, okay? So hands up and just push your shoulder forward, boom, okay, boom. So when you push your shoulder forward, you're pulling your right shoulder back a little bit too, and you're twisting through that sort of center line there. So your jab, comes, your left shoulder comes forward, your right shoulder comes back, okay? If you do that properly, then your right shot arm is ready for a follow-up punch. And then your left arm is ready for a follow-up punch. You push that left shoulder back. And so you can continue going and going and going. If you're just using your arms, you'll tend to leave them out there, out front, and then you'll run out of hand to punch with. Okay, uh, so, perfect. Just the jab first, so step and jab. Step and jab. So you're stepping and pushing your shoulder, left shoulder forward, right shoulder back. Twist through your core. Don't let your hip come over like that. So you're not jabbing like that. Your hips should be square the whole time. Jab, jab, okay. Then you bring the right into it. So jab, punch. Every time you punch, try to also stomp the ground just a little bit. So stomp, 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 stomp. Perfect. Demonstrate again for us, please. Me too, but that's fine. It's virus time. We're all making sacrifices. Okay. Jab, thrust. Jab, thrust. Good. Now we're going to mix the arms in with it. Uh, feel free to pause at this point, rewind, listen to me again. I don't know why you'd want to, um, to get it right before we move on to the next spot. So, mixing the punches in with it. Um, you, you might see a lot of the time people will shadow box and they'll have sort of like floppy wrists. Um, when your hands are in gloves, the gloves sort of push back against you. So it's really easy to um, do that when you're shadow boxing, just have your hands open or not have them that solid. Uh, you need to kind of get by this. So roll up your fingers, squeeze your hands and make through here, not like super tense and tight, but just nice and firm. Um, when you are punching, the more solid and strong your forearm and your wrist is, uh, the less likely you are to damage yourself. And you should do this when you're shadow boxing because it just develops really good habits. The whole point in shadow boxing is you're developing the right habit. If you shadow box really, really basically not doing everything properly, then when you fight, chances are you'll fall back on those same habits. So, hands fold, guard up. Now, when you are doing the jab, you push your hand forwards, push your shoulder forwards, and step forward. Try not to twist your whole body, you're just twisting your upper body and stepping forward. Okay, bring that right hand back to your ear and push your shoulder forward. Perfect. Now, see how Lee, jab again please, has this nice upwards angle here. What you always want to do is punch as if you're punching someone shorter than you. So even though I'm taller than Lee, you want to punch as if she's coming down on my wrist. Remember, one meter distance as well. So when you punch, always punch in like a little bit of an arc so it's coming down at the end. So you're down, down. I'm not saying punch down. You want the punch to come straight, but you don't want to be coming up like that. You always want to be coming down. Okay, so jab, 
Jab. Jab. Good. Perfect. Right punch in next. So same thing. You do the jab with a little step, and then you bring that right foot up slightly. And as you're stepping, you push your right shoulder forward and bring your left shoulder back. One, two. One, two. Perfect. One, two. One, two. And that is the basics of punching with shadow boxing. Um, we can then mix the hook in with it as well. So your guard is up and you are stepping, twisting your foot a little bit. So point your heel out slightly. You're not twisting over a huge amount unless you're absolutely certain that you can knock the other person out. Jab, cross, and then slight twist, hook, bring it just to the front of your face. You don't want to go straight through. One more time, jab, cross, hook, good. Remember you're not twisting your hip over, but you are pushing through with your hip slightly. Perfect. And with the right hook, same thing on the right side, but you are twisting your right foot instead. So jab, cross, hook, and then step with your left foot and hook. Hook, hook, perfect. Jab, cross, hook, hook. Jab, cross, hook, hook, good. When you're doing the hook, try to resist the temptation to come all the way out here. We call that telegraphing, and it's a sure sign to your opponent that you're going to punch them in the side of the head. You don't want them to know that, so try and keep it as nice and tight a movement as possible. Not way out the side. Okay, one more time. Jab, cross, hook, hook. Jab, cross, hook, hook. Good. And lastly, with the uppercut, um, it's really, really common to see an uppercut come down and up like a big digger scoop. Uh, like that's fine if you are aiming to come up under the person's chin and straight up into the sky that way. Uh, but again, you will be letting the other person know that that is what is coming and it gives them a lot of time to just step to the side and avoid it. Um, so with the uppercut, again, you want to get your body behind it. Uh, you don't just want it to be your arm swinging. You want to be pushing through with your hip and your body. So your hands are up, little step, squat a little bit, and then push up with your hips. Notice how my hand goes from here, comes down a little tiny bit, maybe to the bottom of my chin, and then straight up and through. Yep. So if you are coming up this way, what you're doing is you're coming up through here. What you want to do is you want to go straight through that way. Okay? It's really hard to punt uppercut myself. Um, if I stand here, so if I uppercut this way, it might hit the bottom of Lee's chin and it might knock her head back. Um, if I uppercut straight through, she has to do a lot more moving to get out of the way. So, we now have jab, cross, hook, hook, a little bit of a squat and push through with the uppercut. Same thing on the right side, bit of a squat and push through with the uppercut. Uh, it helps as well for power if you squeeze your butt cheeks. So, you just tense the gluteal. Jab, cross, hook, hook, uppercut, uppercut. So now, if you mix, make sure you're stepping every time you punch. So left step when you left punch, right step when you right punch. Jab, cross, hook, hook, uppercut, uppercut. You can now walk around your living room, up and down your stairs, down the hallway, just punching, punching, punching. You were gonna say that. <laughs> Just make like casual noises to yourself. Yep. Pop, 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 pop. The, uh, the reason I am making noises every time I punch is because what you want to get into the habit of doing is breathing out every time you punch. So normally you would go or hop, 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 depending on like, who you are and what noises you like to make. Um, it helps keep you in time. Um, it also means that if you do get hit at some point, you're breathing out. So even if you don't see it, you're not going to get winded. Any questions? Cody, any questions? Yep, your turn. That's good. Okay, so the idea is I want to be pointing my shoulders for every punch that I'm doing, yeah? 
Yes, but what are you defending right now? Where are your hands? So from here? Yes, you don't want to be protecting your nipples. No, absolutely. Okay, okay. And, and why do I, don't I want my guard down here? Um, well, actually, I don't know. You might really like your nipples, yeah. but if you're protecting your nipples, you're generally not protecting your face. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, That's and the important thing, right? your face is your money maker. Yeah. Great. The idea is, so I want to be keeping my guard up tight. Yes. And the thing was turning the shoulders is what it ends up doing is this shoulder protects this side of your jaw. This is your knockout, your pivot point, right? Yep. So if so, you get hit in the jaw, you get knocked out. Yeah. Uh, can I point out one thing? So way right at the start of the video, you might not have been watching, yeah. um, I told everyone to have a strong, yeah. tense hand. Okay. So you're automatically coming in with your hands open right. and you're doing really loose hand punches. Yeah, yeah. If you were to punch me in the chin like that, you're probably more likely to hurt right. your hand hands, right, right. than my so chin. It's really important to keep that root Keep tight, everything right? through here strong. Yep. This is the strong, the battering round part of your arm. Yep. And the power comes from your torso and your shoulder. So you're doing the movements right, but you just need to keep that solid. Right, and we're just going straight forward here. Yeah, perfect. Stepping forward, stepping forward, hook, hook. Good. And make sure that you do every single movement as if you were fighting. Yep. So if you're looking down at the ground and you're just do, 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 that's not how you would fight someone. Right. You wouldn't come at me going, oh yeah, 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 let's go. Yep. Right? You look forwards forward. and you go, okay, shadow, I'm going to punch you. That's how I would normally punch you. Yep. Absolutely. Good. Perfect. <laughs> Brilliant. Excellent. All right, so that ends part two of Shadow Boxing Basics. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Like, subscribe, help out in your neighborhood. Yeah. Thanks for watching this video. We hope you enjoyed the content. If you have any ideas or any suggestions on things that you want to work on specifically, please leave your comments down below in the comments section so that we can upload that content for you. Let me in my zone, please don't let me in.